Good evening. Hello, and welcome to those of you who are watching. Welcome to our panelists. This event is being recorded, and I'm Kelly Mahoney with the League of Women Voters of Naperville. League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. We do not support or oppose candidates for public office. Rather, we believe that a well-informed voter is best able to make their own decision at the ballot box. Tonight's candidate forum is an opportunity for voters to be better informed about the candidates for Illinois House of Representatives for the 41st District. Now, I will introduce tonight's moderator, who is Jane Dorner. Jane is president of the League of Women Voters of Elmhurst and a member of the board of the League of Women Voters of Illinois. Jane is not a resident of the 41st District of Illinois. And I'd like to pass this over to Jane Dorner. Thank you, Kelly. The League's purpose is to promote political responsibility through the informed and active participation of citizens in government. Providing this forum allows citizens to become better informed about the issues facing their community and to become better acquainted with the candidates running for office. We are happy to provide this service for the community. Questions have been collected from league and community members before this forum and were screened for duplication, clarity and appropriateness to the office being discussed. The candidates have not been provided the questions before this forum. This forum is between the two candidates seeking to represent the 41st House District of the Illinois General Assembly. The candidates have agreed to abide by the rules set forth prior to this forum. They will each present a two minute introductory statement, then questions will be asked and each candidate will have up to two minutes to respond in alternating order. Closing statements will be two minutes. There will be a timer slide on the screen and I will ask you to adhere to the time limits. When you see the stop slide, you may finish your sentence, but we ask you to conclude. Our candidates tonight are Grant Worley and Janet Yang Rohr, and we will start with opening statements from Janet Yang Rohr. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Janet Yang Rohr, and I'm running for state representative in the 41st district. This is a community where my husband and I both grew up and where we're now raising our three kids. Uh, I've been in the investment industry for most of the last 20 years, and I'm the director of global data at Morningstar. My job is to stand up for investors, for retirees, and, and to make sure that workers can retire with dignity. I'm gonna take my business background and I'm gonna put it to work in Springfield, just like I have on the 203 school board. And, and we're on the board, we have cut millions in taxes and we've done it while investing in the areas that make a real difference for our students, like, like early childhood education. I'm gonna bring that same ethos to Springfield. We're gonna spend resources wisely and we're gonna focus our efforts where it counts. And the core of why I'm running is I want to make sure our values and our priorities are being represented in Springfield. And, and that means, for example, making sure we all have access to good health care. Our current representative voted against insurance coverage for pre-existing conditions, and he voted against providing insurance to 1.6 million kids in poverty. Those votes helped the insurance companies that have pumped thousands of dollars into his campaign. We also need to defend women's rights and Representative Worley has failed to protect women's reproductive health care. He has folded to the whims of Governor Bruce Rauner when it came to standing up for equal pay for women. Rauner, who had been propping up his party's coffers with, with just millions of his own dollars. Instead, Representative Worley is more focused about lying about how I'll raise taxes on the middle class and retirees despite the fact that I have openly opposed these measures and I've done so in multiple forums where he was present. We deserve better than this and we, des we deserve a leader who will stand up for our values and our priorities. And I'm looking forward to doing just that and getting results for our district. Thank you. Grant Worley, would you like to start with your opening statement, please? I would. Good evening. Thank you for having uh, this forum. I look forward to the question and answers. Uh, my name is Grant Worley. I'm the state representative for the 40th, 41st District. I am born and raised in Naperville. I'm the proud product of 203 schools. Um, I went off to college at Florida Tech and Southern Illinois University where I majored in aviation. Um, 
once I decided to become a stay-at-home parent with my wife, Sharon, of 28 years, I quit flying and went to work for a, a private e equivalent to a global 10 company, Bosch. I ran the Central United States for Bosch Power Tools. Um, I have been very active in civic involvement here in Naperville, from serving on the Naperville Plan Commission, 10 years on the Naperville City Council, the Naperville Education Foundation, the Naperville uh, Development Partnership, uh, Community Concert Center Board, the Riverwalk Commission, the Naper Museum Settlement Board. My civic involvement has been quite extensive. I have taken that passion and love for our community with me down to Springfield, where I have not voted uh, along partisan lines, but what is best representative of the district. It's interesting to hear some of my opponent's opening remarks. Um, it's, you know, the, 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 she's misrepresenting the truth already. Uh, I voted for equal pay. Uh, she talks about money from Rahner, but yet she's taking tens of thousands of dollars from Governor Pritzker. So I look forward to a fair, open, transparent debate that's based on facts and uh, actual data and the truth, which would be refreshing considering some of my opponent's uh, mail pieces and television ads. Let's start with the questions. Our first question goes to Grant Worley. If elected, would you vote to extend the expansion of vote by mail in Illinois past this election cycle? So I would with some caveats. When this bill came up on the House floor and we were operating under COVID conditions, uh, we were in the Bank of Springfield, I would support the expansion of vote by mail provided we put some protections in for ballot security. One of the issues that, that I had when this bill came up, the rules in which we're operating now, was the drop boxes. This, uh, there was no definition of what was ballot security when it came to drop boxes. Um, we suggested during floor debate that we at least look at California, what they're doing, and bring in some ballot security measures. Uh, under the previous, you know, under this law, it's very loose, um, but we should absolutely expand voting. I personally think it should be a national holiday. It should probably be on a Saturday. Uh, the voting rights to everyone must be absolutely secure and everyone should have the right to a safe ballot. Uh, so I, I would expand uh, vote by mail in the future, provided we can do it safely and securely. Thank you. Janet Yang Rohr, same question. I would absolutely vote for that. Fair and secure elections are just the cornerstone of our democracy. And the good thing is we've been doing vote by mail for such a long time and it is safe and it is secure here in DuPage and Will counties. Uh, the concern now is probably that that vote by mail levels are, are very high. And so we need to all make sure that we return our ballots early. We need to make sure we have plenty of time to to find issues and, and we can all track our ballots online. Uh, if, if you have concerns about mail, which I know a, a lot of people do, you should know that you can always drop off your vote by mail ballots at, at any early voting site or any polling place. And you have to make sure that that all your ballots are that your ballot is postmarked by election day, uh, that, which is November 3rd. Um, and our ballots are gonna start arriving probably within the week. Uh, that was our PSA announcement for tonight. And, and the somewhat sad thing of this is, is that we even have to have like a, a clear communication like that in, in this environment about people's voting rights. We have to do it because we have a president like Donald Trump who is actively sowing discord and confusion. And despite what President Donald Trump says, uh, no one should go and vote twice. We need leaders who will fight for people's right to vote. And we want leaders to make it easier to vote. Representative Worley is not that leader. He voted against sending vote by mail applications to his constituents, and he did it in the middle of a pandemic. We need leaders who will encourage people to have their voices heard. And this is one of our country's founding principles. The next question starts with candidate Yang Rohr. What is your view on term limits for the executive and legislative branches of Illinois state government? For me, um, you know, I think that Illinois voters have the ability to, to limit any elected officials term office uh, every single time they go to the polls. You know, especially given the, the frequent shortage of well-qualified candidates willing to run for office, I think if voters and constituents are happy with their elected representative, that they should have the ability to, to vote and keep them in office um, without, without that added constriction of, of term limits. And, you know, as, um, as a member of the school board and, and seeing especially local elections, I've seen the, the problems that can happen when you don't have these well-qualified candidates 
Uh, we've seen it on our, our park district board, for example, when, when, you, when people run these uncontested elections, they start doing things that are like clearly against the, the will of, of the people and against the, the will of the community, uh, wasting so much money on frivolous lawsuits when they should be doing things to, to obviously to serve our, our community and, and making sure that, that they're, they're using resources wisely. So I think, again, that, that voters have always the ability to, to limit those, those terms in office by, by voting uh, their officials in or out. Thank you. Candidate Worley, same question. Thank you. I am a uh, ardent supporter of term limits. While serving on the Naperville City Council, I worked diligently to make sure that term limits were passed. And now uh, that is the law of the land for the city of Naperville when it comes to the city council. Um, I would also point out that my opponent didn't actually answer the question when it comes to the executive branch and the legislative branch, which I also believe needs term limits. Um, the reason she can't answer that question, because that would be a direct uh, shot at Speaker Mike Madigan, who's fully funding her campaign. So when someone's been in office for 50 years, they took office, the Speaker took office when I was two. We have too much power concentrated in one person, and he's built that power up over his time as leader. And now we see the repercussions of that. He has a supermajority stranglehold in the Illinois House, and he funds campaigns to get even more power because the next thing he wants control over is, is fair maps, which hopefully we'll get to a question on that. I believe in absolutely term limits. Um, it is good for democracy. I work in the people's house, uh, and that's how it should stay. It should not fall under the control of one man who's been there for way too long and is under federal investigation. Uh, strong supporter of term limits at both the executive level and at the legislative level. It works for the president of the United States. It should work for uh, us as well. Thank you. Grant Worley, what is your view on the fair tax amendment proposal that is on the November 3rd ballot? So I am opposed to the graduated tax uh, on this November's ballot. I have spent 10 years in the Naperville City Council and we look at our budgeting there. We have a AAA bond rating. We do our budget process that is 10 months or more in time. Springfield does just the exact opposite. We have the worst bond rating in the state of Illinois. We're one notch above junk and Standard & Poor's just today put us on negative watch, which means without some absolute dr drastic changes to our budget, we will reach junk status. Simply asking for more money is not the solution. What we need to look at is how we're spending money. Budgets are reflective of our priorities. This year's budget spent $2 billion. That's with a B, more than the previous year's budget. That's in the height of a pandemic. We also, this budget require, re, relies on uh, spending that isn't, or it relies on revenue that isn't actually there. It's 15% of this budget is based on unrealized tax revenues. So we're spending money we don't have. And yet we increase spending on top of that. Instead of doing the responsible thing that many other states did during the pandemic and look at how we control our expenses and what many small businesses are doing right now is looking at how they control expenses. We continue to spend and spend and spend and then want to go to the taxpayers like my opponent has done three times on the school board and just ask for more money. That's not responsible budgeting. Our state has the highest tax levels in the, in the entire nation when looked at it in its entirety. People are taxed to, to no end in the state of Illinois, and we need to change that, and we need to provide them with a budget that's fair and responsible and provides necessary essential services. Thank you. Janet Yang, Roar, what is your view on the fair tax amendment proposal? Here's the reality. Under the graduated tax, which, which every single voter has a say on, almost every single one of us would see our tax bills go down. That's the simple truth. While uh, I think, well, while it's obvious that, that uh, Representative Worley is against it, the, the truth is that it will raise more money to address the issues that he is talking about. It will raise money to address the issues that he says that he cares about, like education, like um, funds for developmentally disabled. These are programs that, that we need to cover. And when we say um, cut 10% here or there, what we're doing is we are cutting those, those very programs that, that he professes to care so much about. Whether our state, um, we're, you know, getting through this vote is gonna be tough. And so whether our state retains our flat tax system or moves to a graduated system, my priority, if elected, will always be to ensure that the middle class is protected from tax increases. 
despite the lies that Representative Worley will tell you, I am absolutely committed to not raising taxes on middle class families and to not raising taxes or levying taxes on retirement income, full stop. So to put it very bluntly, the, the last two decades, they just haven't been great for the middle class. The rich have gotten richer. The top 10% of Illinois earners have seen 110% of the state, state's wage growth. And the remaining 90% has actually seen a wage decline. And so in this context, I think that adopting a graduated tax policy like, like that of the federal structure makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Janet Yang Rohr, education funding in Illinois has been a subject for concern and debate for, for decades. What is your plan to provide high quality education to the children of Illinois? Education is a topic that's so near and dear to my heart. Uh, I think the evidence-based funding formula made important advances. We just need to fund it now. And one of the, the tools to do that will be through the, the graduated tax system. There's, there's so much more that, that we can do though to, to make sure that our kids are, are, and our students are, are set for the future. At the, um, at the early childhood to, through 12 level, for example, we need to, of course, continue supporting state level contributions and which will, which will pave the way for local tax relief. Uh, we need to, at this point, you know, there, there's a lot of impact to education due to COVID. Uh, we need to make sure that all students have access to technology, to make sure that they have safe, pl safe places to work and to study. Uh, we need to invest in our teachers to, to make sure that we don't lose them to other fields. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of the work that we've done on the school board to address things like achievement gaps, to address things like, like diversity and, and equity. Uh, these are some of the things that, that have earned me the support of the Illinois Federation of Teachers and the Stand for Education endorsements. Um, you know, we need to also make sure that, that we're approaching this from, from so many sides, like, like technical education, uh, making, making sure that students who, who don't see themselves going to four-year schools have a path and giving them opportunities to discover, you know, what, what piques their interest and what, what they might be really good at. Um, I will always support our students so that they can make these positive changes and, and make the positive changes that they want to see in the world. Thank you. Grant Worley, what's your plan to provide high-quality education for the students in Illinois? So I was a proud supporter of, I, I voted in favor of the evidence-based funding formula. It is clear that we have economic disparity throughout our state and this new funding formula makes sure that the dollars flow to where they are most needed and can have the greatest impact on what I consider the cornerstone to all of our future and that's the education of our youth. So I was a proud supporter of that bill. Um, another piece of uh, legislation that I was proud to vote yes on was, a, believe it or not, a minimum wage increase for teachers. Now, it may not impact teachers here in our area so much, but downstate raising the minimum salary for a teacher to $40,000, uh, that is something that is way too low. I am, I am married to a dedicated professional teacher. I see firsthand the impact that they can have on our children's lives, that we need to make sure that we're retaining these world-class teachers, not only here in Naperville, but around our great state. Um, another thing that I've actually been opposed to are unfunded mandates that come down from Springfield. For some reason, the leadership in Springfield on the other side of the aisle thinks that they have all the answers. So they want our, our teachers to teach, you know, certain subject areas, but then they tell them what to teach, but they don't give them the money to go about teaching it. So I hear often from other school board members that we need to stop with the unfunded mandates. Uh, and that is something that I have opposed because it's just, it's spending without the dollars associated with it. Thank you. Grant Worley, gun violence is a real issue in Illinois. What's your plan to reduce the violence that takes the lives and livelihoods of innocent Illinoisans? So there is no doubt we can do a better job uh, when it comes to the violence in Illinois. Uh, I think the first step we need is a uh, prosecutor in Cook County that's actually going to prosecute the law. We, have, we live in a state with the largest number of uh, gun restrictions laws on the books. And so the first step would be to have in these high crime areas, those laws actually enforced. But I'm happy to uh, be a supporter of what was, what's known as the red flag law. So if current, under current law now uh, that I supported, if someone is showing signs of mental health or instability, a family member or a loved one can alert law enforcement and they can go in there and remove firearms or other weapons and get them out of their, that individual's possession. Uh, I was also a proud uh, to support a 72-hour wait limit on, on 
long gun, so rifles, shotguns, things like that on purchases. That was currently the law for uh, handguns, and now we uh, made it universal across all firearms. Another piece of legislation that I ran multiple times and supported when another colleague ran it through law is a full outright ban on bump stocks. I mean, my opponent is saying that I support that, and that's I, the legislation's been filed. I supported it. So there are things that we can do. Gun ownership is not only a right under the Second Amendment, but it's also a responsibility. And things that we need to do as a state on a go-forward basis is first and foremost, make sure the law is enforced, but then institute common laws, as I just mentioned, that make sure that the responsibility component of gun ownership is upheld. Thank you. Janet Yang Rohr, what's your plan to reduce gun violence? There are a number of pieces of legislation that we need to pass to that the vast majority of Americans support. And when we do that, we can make sure that we are reducing gun suicides, school shootings, and, and domestic violence. We need stronger safe storage laws, such as increasing penalties and liabilities for adults that, that do not securely control access to firearms from, from minors. We need to close gun show loopholes and strengthen universal background checks. We need to fix the bio bill and improve, fix, fix the FOID and improve the process with, with fingerprinting. Um, we need to invest in mental health services and, and make sure, for example, our, that our schools have resources that they need to, to respond to students in crisis. I'm so proud to have the endorsements of the Giffords PAC, the GPAC, and I am a gun sense candidate with every town for gun safety and with Moms Demand Action. These are endorsements that show that I am a co common sense, I'm for common sense gun safety laws, and they are widely supported actions that, that our schools and our, our communities will um, benefit from and, and be safer as a result. Representative Worley has, quite frankly, he has sold out to the gun lobby and he has pocketed campaign cash from the NRA and from gun manufacturers. And then he's voted with them, and you can see this in his record, he's voted with them to block regulation of assault weapons. He's voted with them in opposing stronger background checks and in continuing the sale of bump stock modifications and in protecting the same loopholes that, that dangerous criminals use um, and that the mentally ill use when, that when they go and obtain deadly military grade weapons. You know, when, when we invest in services that, that give people opportunities like good paying jobs, like educational training, like small business resources, um, I think we also start addressing some of these issues. And, and when we expand these services and, and help those that are most at risk, we can really just start to lift people up and ensure that we don't have to resort to crime to, to fix these problems. Thank you. Uh, Janet Yang Rohr, what, re what reforms would you support for campaign financing here in Illinois? So um, I think for as far as campaign finance goes, we should always, always strive for increased transparency. We need to make sure our donors and, and we need to make sure donors and organizations have to disclose where money comes from, uh, particularly around super PACs. And we can't let corporations and multimillionaires and billionaires use their dollars to, to secretly influence our elections. Uh, right now, we have an open Supreme Court seat and, and whoever fills that is going to decide on issues just like this. And we have a historically unpopular president who, who didn't win the popular vote, who's trying to ram through his nominee. And it looks like he's going to be successful at it. We need to have change all the way from the local level, all the way to the president, presidential level to, to stop these things from happening. And, you know, Representative Worley, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about all the money that's coming to my campaign. And that money comes from the Democratic Party of Illinois whose sole job it is to, is to get Democrats elected. And that money comes from the teachers, the firefighters, the nurses, and, and countless other essential workers that, that we rely on every day to, to make our economy tick and, and that we are fighting for in this campaign. That money and that support has come from the hundreds of donors in the 41st district who believe that we all deserve health care, that we need to protect women's women's rights and workers' rights, and that quality education is the tide that lifts all boats. Uh, they support me with these donations because they can see that the current representative does not share these same goals. And my number one priority will to make sure to fill that void and deliver results that lift up our community. Thank you. Grant Worley, where are you on campaign finance reform? 
First, I would, I would like to respond to something my opponent said earlier uh, that I pocketed money. Ms. Yang Roar, ethics matter always. I have never pocketed one cent of campaign money. And for you to infer otherwise shows a strong breach of character, in my opinion. That is just downright false, and you know it. Campaign finance. Um, I have been a supporter of a bill that require when we do our campaign finance disclosures that we would actually have to PDF or photocopy, JPEG, whatever format works best for you, every single receipt that shows where every penny came from and where every penny went from. Of course, under Speaker Madigan, he doesn't want that clarity when it comes to campaign finance. Um, I find it ironic that Ms. Yang Roar is talking about the millionaires and billionaires funding campaigns when the individual funding her campaign is one of the richest men in, the, in Illinois, the governor, and then the millions from Speaker Mike Madigan. This is what he does. He raises money and then he turns around and he buys seats. So if people want to look at campaign finance disclosure, and I welcome them to, you can go to the state website, Illinois State Board of Elections, and you can search both of our names and you can see where our money comes from. My money comes from, for my campaign, a lot of grassroots donors. I have a lot of $5, $10, $20 donors. I have some business people in town that have given me $1,000, but it's the grassroots campaign. I believe that we absolutely need to get major money out of politics. It is across the board 100% true. But for Ms. Yang Roar to say that she's going to represent the little guy when she's basically fully funded by Michael J. Madigan is absolutely laughable and is without any common sense whatsoever. Grant Worley, COVID has hit our state hard. We were able to reduce infection numbers and the mortality rate, but now the numbers are rising again. Do what do you, to what do you attribute these increases? What is your stance on mask wearing and social distancing? So I believe we each have a responsibility to wear a mask and to socially distance. Uh, that is something that I, that I believe and I practice when I go to Casey's or Oswald's or out shopping or out seeing friends along the river walk. Um, I think the uptick is a natural occurrence. If you look at some of the historical data with pandemics, I think we're seeing a natural uptick. It has to do with environment and, and people's immune systems. Um, I think the governor, at, at the beginning of the lockdown, I was with him. I thought he did a good job. But when I see him shutting down Metro East with one set of parameters and then shutting down what is known as Region 7, which is Will County and Kankakee County, with a different metric, I'm looking for consistency and leadership, and that's not it. So do I believe we are all in this together? Absolutely. But I think the governor needs to be a little bit more, a lot more transparent in what he's doing. Uh, his, own, his own party says so. He received a letter from uh, Democrat members of the Illinois House saying, Governor, we need some answers here. Because I know when I reach out, I share their frustration with the governor's office. He's not returning phone calls. It is not a collaborative process. This is a co-equal branch of government that I serve in. And this is something that we should be working together. Instead, we're on, I believe, the seventh executive order extending his rules with zero input from a co-equal branch of government. That's not right. But to answer the question, I believe in wearing a mask. I believe we all have a responsibility uh, in social distancing that we can get back to a somewhat normal uh, course of life sooner rather than later. Janet Yang Roar, same question. We, we all want a return to normalcy. Uh, we want to return to work. We want to return to seeing our friends and returning to school. And, and, and let me tell you, with, with three elementary school kids, uh, I, I really want to see them back in school. And you know, to do that, we all need to do our parts to get infection rates low, to make sure that, that we can keep our restaurants open, to keep our businesses open so we don't have to quarantine uh, our, our community. We don't have to quarantine our teachers and our students. So that means wear your masks, wash your hands, keep your distance. Uh, let's let everyone do our parts to to help our entire community. And you know, when we talk about this, this return to normal thing, we talk about how how COVID has just just have absolutely devastated our our economy. The the discussion is often just just framed as this 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 kind of duality between being careful and, and protecting health versus versus protecting our environment or sorry, our, our economy. And I, I just have to say like it, those issues are just so interrelated and, and so many of the issues that, that we're talking about are interrelated and the pandemic has just shown a bright light on those issues. Uh, it's shown why it's so important to have affordable health care for a well-functioning economy. It's, so, it's shown why it's so important to have sick leave. Um, you and I don't, don't want our colleagues coming into work when they're sick, and we don't want parents sending their sick kids to school because they can't take paid sick leave. 
we, we should all know that in 2017 and 2018, Representative Worley voted against paid sick leave. And it is true that as the pandemic took hold, he finally did vote for paid sick leave. But all the pandemic did was make it exceedingly obvious, something that I think most of us already knew was a necessity and made smart economic and humane sense. And we knew this without a pandemic. And we need someone who doesn't need to learn these lessons the hard way. We, we need someone who will fight for these issues even when there's, there's not a pandemic and who understands that having access to health care and these benefits matter no matter what. Thank you. Uh, candidate Yang Rohr, this um, question is very similar to what we've just discussed. COVID numbers are at levels in Will and DuPage counties where most restrictive rules, where more restrictive rules on gatherings have been or have the possibility of being enacted. Do you support the metrics slash regional approach being used to determine the status of each region? I, I do support that that more nuanced view. You know, I think one of the the valid criticisms of of Governor Pritzker when when he first started was that that he treated the whole state as as one monolith, and and it's clear that it's not. We we see that our southern counterparts don't take COVID mitigation efforts seriously, and so we should not. Our, our, our region should not be tied to theirs because um, we are being responsible and, and they are not. Again, um, you know, we, we need to get, get back on track to get, get, um, get our economy back on track from COVID and to recover. And to do this, there, there are so many things we need to do. Um, there are, there are going to be budget challenges that, that we need to work through. Uh, we need to reprioritize spending. We need to re, re, reprioritize our, our needed resources, like making sure we have first responders ready, that we have health care, and that we have COVID response measures. Um, and, and we need to oversee uh, and, and make sure that, that we're strictly overseeing every single dime that's spent. Uh, we need to invest in programs that, that meet our new pressure points. Uh, so things like, like displaced workers and, and making sure that we have PPE for frontline workers. You know, I, I, am, I want to bring my, my business experience, something that, that is so lacking in, in a lot of Springfield, and especially in the Democratic Party. I want to bring that and make sure that, that we're making these, these good decisions and making sure that, that we're evaluating the state budget and, and working with others for, for common sense, data-driven, and, and cost-effective measures. And uh, just to shore up these, our state's budget, especially in these kind of very trying times. Thank you. Grant Worley, same question. Could you repeat, repeat it, please? I'm not yep. sure we went off on a yep, tangent. Of course. COVID numbers are at levels in Will and DuPage counties where more restrictive rules on gatherings have been or have the possibility of being enacted. Do you support the metrics slash regional approach being used to determine the status of each region? So I support the, the regional approach, but I do not support the metrics. I think the, the, the governor has been uh, opaque at best in articulating what these metrics are, when they can and cannot, uh, you know, when we, when we hit a threshold, how many days does it take to change that? What does a shutdown look like? I brought up the, the, the disparity between the Metro East region and the Will, Kankakee, uh, with the number of restaurants, percentage, things like that. So it seems to be a changing target. So that's where uh, uh, we need to have the legislative branch interact with the with the executive branch and come up with something that is that makes sense and is equitable across our entire great state now my opponent brought up the paid sick leave and that just uh you know that my my changing position on that and that just goes to show she doesn't understand the legislative process these bills are works in progress and when we when we vote no on a certain bill it's because we think we can make it better so when this that bill the paid sick leave became a better bill one that had bipartisan support that had input from all stakeholders the business uh, and, the, and the employees, and we, we got together and we came up with a solution, that's called the legislative process, and it works when, when we get to a good answer that we did where I was proud to vote for it. Thank you. Grant Worley, do you believe that the Russians have successfully targeted and infiltrated the Illinois state election infrastructure and what has been done or should have been done to protect the system from foreign and domestic hackers? So I don't know if it was the Russians specifically, but I do know that our State Board of Elections website and data, there was a breach. We saw a similar breach when it came to unemployment security. Uh, it was not only a hack, but it was also data was, was, was compromised via other means, uh, open sources that should have been locked down, things like that. So 
what we need to do is come up with a holistic cybersecurity plan for the state of Illinois. That is something that my colleague, Keith Wheeler, he's an IT guy. This is what he does. He has a bill that does just that. It works on, on how we can bring greater cybersecurity to the state of Illinois. Keep in mind that the state of Illinois, the technology that we use, there's literally agencies that still use COBOL. It is so antiquated that there are probably only four programmers that can still even make it work. So our, our IT infrastructure across all departments within the state of Illinois needs an upgrade. The biggest obstacle to that is that the state workers don't want that because they would rather do the menial tasks of paper, you know, into slot A over to pile B. And that's just not fair. We need an efficient government. We need to introduce that technology. That is something that, that Speaker Madigan has repeatedly blocked funding for moving us towards a greater infrastructure uh, from an IT standpoint, but also cybersecurity. Listen, as we talked about with earlier on, on voting, we need secure systems in place, when we're talking about very specific data, whether it's unemployment, people's health care, when we're talking about assistance to those families that need special with special needs, they need our help. They need to know that that data is secure. Uh, there's a piece of legislation, I can certainly get you the bill number, there's over 6,000 bills in a year. Uh, so I can't cite it off the top of my head. But that's a piece of legislation, I believe Keith Wheeler's the one that's, that uh, filed that and it's one I would support. Thank you. Janet Yang Rohr, same question. You know, we always need to be investing in our systems. We always need to make sure that, that we are taking care of, of cybersecurity and that we're taking care of it at all levels, whether that's the local, the state, the national level. Uh, we have seen for sure that, that you know, Russian operatives, other, um, you know, nefarious actors have, have influenced our, our election process. They have influenced our, the, the way we, uh, consume and and gather news and this the, these are you know great and grave uh concerns to to me and i think to, to so many people uh so i i absolutely support any 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 investment any effort to to make sure that that we are secure in these issues i i need to i need to emphasize for this group that when we say that we support these things that the most, it's not enough to say that we support it. We need to fund it. I know that on the school board, like one of the most important tools that, that I have, that we have as school board members is, is the tool of the budget and where we, where we put our money, where we decide to spend, you know, every year, those are the areas where we are prioritizing our issues and where we, where we say to our, our community and when we say to our students and our families that these are the things that we care about. And when we vote against budgets or when we don't work with others to find the compromise, to find the budgets that we can vote for, then we are not truly supporting these issues. We, we can't keep um, this, this pattern of disinvestment in, in our systems and in, in cybersecurity, in election security, in, in our, our, our jobs um, and, and IDS programs. We, we have to put our, our money where our mouth is and make sure that we find the funding to make sure that, that we are investing for the long term. Thank you. Candidate Yang Rohr, do you believe we need to change how district maps are drawn in Illinois? If so, what would your plan look like? We, we absolutely need a fair and transparent process. You know, um, Democrats are, are obviously in, in power now. And, and, but the thing is, I, I absolutely don't believe that that will always be the case. And we can't act like they will always be the case, which is why Democrats and everyone, we, we need to participate and have a, a fair and transparent process where everyone works together and everyone makes sensible compromise. Uh, compromises that will that will work whether or not it's it's one party or the other in in power. Um, we need to include input from the public, and we need to always always uphold just the the highest standards of the Voting Rights Act. And we we also of course need to make sure that this happens at the federal level. Uh, we need to make sure that it's fair and transparent um, across the country. Thank you, Grant Worley. Same question. I absolutely support fair maps. Um, and this is, to be honest, we need to do it locally, but it's best handled at the federal level. Uh, this is where uh, former President Obama and I are in agreement. It is wrong when Democrats do it in blue states like Illinois. It is wrong when Republicans do it in red states like Texas. As far as how we do it, uh, I would look to our neighbors directly to the west, Iowa. 
has a fair map process that is open and transparent. It is one that is working. Um, right now, the speaker is trying to get more seats. He's already has a super majority, but he wants more seats because he knows going into the 22 election, he wants control of that map. So if anyone thinks that as long as Speaker Madigan is around and those that vote for the speaker, that will vote for the speaker, uh, Michael J. Madigan, we'll, we will get fair maps. It will be another decade before we see fair maps. This is truly the biggest piece of reform that the state of Illinois needs, in my opinion. Right now, we have legislators picking who vote for them. Instead, it should be you, the voters, picking who, vote, who represents you in Springfield. So this is an absolute must do in Springfield. I would look to our neighbors in Iowa for a solution. It seems to be working there. Thank you. Grant Worley, Illinois has the lowest credit rating of all 50 states. We are one of the states with the highest exodus rates. What steps would you take to make Illinois a destination state for individuals and employers? Well, first off, we need a budget process. My, my opponent talks about priorities and we, I, I, I agree, we do need a budget that reflects our priorities. But then instead of going uh, out and to quote her, find the funding, we need to live within our means. We cannot simply continue to raise taxes on people and have a decline in services. And when we see our pension costs ballooning and expect people to stay in Illinois. So the, the exodus, uh, some in Springfield don't think is real. Uh, I absolutely do. What we need to do is make sure that people are staying here. So I'm opposed to the graduated income tax. I am opposed to taxing retirement income. We also need to make sure that our education is solid because that's a reason people move to at least our area of the state, but then also employment. Right now, if you look at the recovery of Illinois from the Great Recession and now in COVID, we are lagging the nation. And that is because we have onerous, restrictive uh, re restrictions in, in, in rules for our small and medium and large businesses. We absolutely need to make Illinois a business friendly state. Putting a graduated income tax on our businesses will absolutely have them flee. And then it's then we are in a, a horrible position. It, it, it can get even worse. With regards to the budget, uh, this, and I stated it early, this, earlier, this year, the budget spent $2 billion more than we did the previous year. In the height of a pandemic, we didn't make one single cut. Not a single cut anywhere. We relied on over $6 billion of borrowed money. Uh, S&P came out today, they put us on a negative uh, watch. That doesn't mean they're, you know, we may go to junk status, but they're, they're expecting us to. Because if we don't come in and live within our means, we will reach junk status, and that makes our borrowing costs go up even higher. So we need a responsible budget, one that prioritizes spending and makes cuts when and wherever available. Thank you. Janet Yang Rohr, same question. Well, uh, we've already talked about education. Education is, is one of those things that, that draws people in and that we need to, to invest more in. Uh, let's talk about the budget because, because it is very true. Um, the things that, that, that other people around the country hear about when, when they think about Illinois, it's, it's the budget and it's pensions. And so, you know, when it comes to this, this area, there, there are absolutely no easy answers. And, and to make progress, we have to bring everyone around the table and we have to just, just work together to, to find solutions that pass constitutional muster. Uh, let's look at Grant Representative Worley's actions on, on the budget, uh, especially the stalemate from 2016 to 2018. Because of, of those political shenanigans, um, that inability to, to work well with others and to pass a budget, this resulted in the state not being allowed to pay the bills and invoices on services and goods that had already been rendered using money that was already sitting in state bank accounts. These are the bureaucratic, the, the Kafka-esque messes that, that every leader should always be trying to avoid and, and not to perpetuate. But it is, it is those political maneuvers like that that, that drive um, those, those low credit ratings and that, that make investors of, of our municipal bonds not want to touch Illinois because they can't trust that, that our politicians will pass a budget because we've given them reason to show that, that we have not put, passed budgets in the past. Uh, these were totally self-inflicted wounds 
they were wrought on us by politicians with, with the consequences completely borne by our community. And it caused small businesses to shut down and to add insult to injury, it, it resulted in millions of dollars of additional late fees and additional growing interest payments that, that we continue to pay today. And so it's gonna take a lot to right the ship, uh, but when it comes, when, when we make practical collaborative decisions, we, we can start chipping away at the problem. Thank you. Uh, candidate Yang Roar, marijuana and sports betting are now legal in Illinois. What regulations, if any, do you see necessary for these new industries? Well, um, you know, on the topic of marijuana, I think that, that we have, the, the, I think that the state of Illinois did it the right way. Um, first of all, the most important part of the legislation that came there was that it cleared the records of, of more than 11,000 low level offenders. Those were good moves that that let those those people um, get make it, it made it easier for them to get jobs, get housing, um, get financial aid for college, and it let them it let them restart their lives. Uh, it also, at the same time, um, made made rec recreational dispensaries an issue, right? But I think they did it the right way. I think our legislator legislature did it the right way by by letting voters decide what is right for the community. And in in terms of of you know those those issues with with marijuana with with um, uh, sports betting, I think that's what makes sense. If at the state level it's allowed, it makes sense to have it. Um, be, be determined at the municipality level, at the local level, what is appropriate for, for that community and, and what, what makes sense for the, the values and the priorities of, of that community. Grant Worley, same question. Thank you. I did not support the legalization uh, of recreational use for marijuana, first and foremost, because of the negative impact it has on our youth. Um, you know, you can look at some CDC, CDC studies. It's still a Schedule One drug. I would much rather prefer to see the federal government remove it from a Schedule One drug, actually do some peer-reviewed studies on it, and come up with a rescheduling of marijuana so we truly know the impact. This is not the marijuana of the 60s and 70s. This is some high THC stuff, boutique drugs uh, that are being sold out there. So I did not support it, first and foremost, because I thought it was... Um, uh, was going to do harm to our youth. Uh, I also think it's a bad idea to start to legalize things just in the sake of getting more revenue. Uh, you know, we, we spoke earlier of the budget and, and uh, you know, our bills backlog, which by the way is growing under this current administration. It was 5.4 billion uh, at the start of the fiscal year. It's now at 7.7 .7 billion. So Governor Pritzker's budget is not solving our, our, our bills backlog. Uh, but when we're looking at revenue streams like that in order to shore up wasteful spending, I think that's a bad thing. I did support uh, the expansion of gaming because I thought there were some protections in there when it came to the addiction and mental health aspect of being addicted to that. There's limits, there's ways to seek help, things like that. Um, and it was one of those areas that I thought we did it in a proper way. Uh, and I did support that. Thank you. Candidate Worley, do you agree with the Illinois Reproductive Health Act? Um, I do not. I am, uh, I am a pro-life uh, candidate. I, I believe that late term and partial birth abortions should not be legal in the state of Illinois. That being said, I understand Roe v. Wade is the law of the land, and uh, that's, I'm, I'm pro-life. Thank you. Candidate Yang Roar, same question. I, I am so proud to have the endorsements of Personal PAC, of Planned Parenthood, of Emily's List. Uh, these are the organizations that tirelessly advocate for, for women's rights and their access to quality health care. And uh, when it comes to, to health care, women's health care, women's rights, there's, there's just so much we can do. Uh, we need to make sure that, that women have equitable access, uh, especially minority women, to, to all these, these services, these health care services, and particularly around maternal health care. Um, regardless of where you live, what your income level is, we all deserve access to health care. And especially if you're pregnant and, and you, you should be able to go to the doctor, you should be able to take care of your baby, and we need to be able to fund those, those programs that, that, let, um, that give care to, to new mothers. Uh, it's, it's unacceptable that there's a segment of a po our population that doesn't have this. Uh, you know, Representative Worley, I, I, when, when I've 
been in these forums with him uh, when, when it comes to women's rights. I, I think he, he usually likes to talk about how he voted for the Equal Rights Amendment and, and how he broke with the Republican Party to cast this vote. I, I have to say, if, if that is a vote that you consider brave, then I think your, your, your bar for bravery is, is too low. And I think that there's, there's so much that, that more that we need to do. Um, and, you know, as, as, as you've heard, Representative Worley does not believe that, that women's health care decisions should, between, should be between uh, her and her doctor. Um, similarly, when it comes to equal pay for women, Representative Worley has already shown that he will succumb to the top, to, to political pressure and back down when standing up for women. Uh, he, he did not stand up for women when it came to voting for, voting against that veto against Governor Rauner. And we also have Trump attacking women's rights and the right to choose. Uh, again, uh, these things are going to be decided at, uh, with, with, a, with a Supreme Court that's been totally stocked with, with Trump appointees. Okay. And we, we need you. to make sure that we fight for these rights. Thank you. Um, candidate Yang Roar, Illinois is on a path to pay minimum wage at the rate of $15 an hour in 2025. What actions will you take to support or oppose this? I, I, I am in total support of a living wage and a minimum wage of, of $15 an hour. Uh, when you look at how real wages have, have uh, completely stagnated in the past two decades, I, I think that, th that it, it's a clear um, it's clear that, that we need to, to, to help our workers. And I will always be on the side of, of workers and making sure that they have the, the benefits, the rights that, that they need to, to, to thrive. Um, at the same time, you know, I realize and I recognize that, that this, this puts a burden on small businesses. And I will be at the table uh, making sure that, that, that the small businesses are absolutely represented when, when bills like these come up, these, these you know, minimum wage laws that, that will, will absolutely affect their business and their bottom line. Um, that's why I also re, I support reducing taxes and fees on our local businesses. I support restoring tax credits for businesses that are committed to, to innovation and expansion. Um, I support developing a strong workforce so that we can build a strong economy that, that supports um, that supports these businesses and gives them good um, workforces to, and, and skilled workforces to draw from. Uh, these are principles that, that will always drive my, my legislative agenda um, when it comes to supporting businesses, when it comes to supporting our community and, and, and you know, whatever the, the context or the environment. Grant Worley, same question. Thank you. So we need to find a way to help all businesses prosper in the state of Illinois. And it's through that prosperity that wages will grow. Uh, right now, Illinois businesses operate on, under some of the most onerous business regulations in the entire nation. I have been endorsed by the Illinois Chamber of Commerce, the National Federation of Independent Businesses, the Illinois Manufacturers Association, because I understand it is through that economic growth that the rising tide will lift all boats. In order to fund the minimum wage without job loss, that, that to me is not a way to fund it. If one person's making $15, but two people lost their job in order to get there, we need to make sure that our economy is growing. That gets back to removing regulations on business. That gets back to having a budget process that's clear and transparent and provides certainty for our future. Um, one of my roles is I am the spokesperson on labor and commerce. And we see these bills come in front of this committee. And in Illinois, for the majority party, the Democrats, they look at business as something to be taxed into oblivion and as a, as a way to fund their pet projects. We need to get rid of that mindset. Here in Naperville, we have strong a strong growing economy. Same thing in Warren, Warrenville, because we bolster our local economy. That means that when the Abercrombie and Fitch in downtown Naperville, they have to pay their workers more because there's that the, the competition for that worker. We, it's through that economic growth that we can fund on a sustainable basis and not through artificial government prop ups, an increase in all wages for everybody. I agree that we need to get the wage increased, but I think we do that through economic development, not through government telling businesses how they should do things and what they should pay people. Thank you. We're getting really close to the very end. Let's, uh, let's start with our closing statements and we'll start with uh, Grant Worley. First off, thank you very much for hosting this forum. I've truly enjoyed it. Uh, to me, this is the deliberative, the deliberative process that makes our community so great. As we get together, we share ideas, and we try to build upon that. 
Instead of me using my words to tell you why people should support my candidacy, I'm gonna read a few quick sentences from a local newspaper endorsement. And I quote, um, he's a solid voice for small business and an ardent advocate for responsible spending controls and a better fiscal management by state government. They go on to say that I show streaks of unqualified independence as a support for the Equal Rights Amendment, higher pay for caregivers up for the disabled, the Clean Energy Jobs Act, and other pieces of environmental legislation. In their closing, they say Worley is a candid and straightforward leader with, with government leadership experience that is broad and deep. So I care deeply about the community that I represent. I am raising a family here. My wife works here. I want to provide an Illinois future that was so appreciated by me growing up here. I want that for all of Naperville. I want our businesses to, to thrive and to be successful. I have a record of doing just that. I have the vision of getting Illinois out of the fiscal morass that it is in now into a place that is sustainable and welcoming for all to come and enjoy. I appreciate you hosting this forum. My name is Grant Worley and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Janet Yang Rohr, your closing statement. Thanks. You know, from, from who deserves health care to who deserves to be paid and treated fairly, I, I think you've probably seen in the last hour that, that Representative Worley and I really differ on a lot of these issues. And when you think about how we're going to address them, I, I think it's pr probably not lost on, on anyone here that this is also a time when um, in our history where the stakes just couldn't be higher. Uh, we have a Senate majority leader who's now trying to ram through a Trump Supreme Court nominee and I know uh, many of us just reel at the hypocrisy of it. And I know that we sometimes feel so helpless at the unfairness of it, but, but we, we don't have to sit back and take it. We can act in our votes and we can take our future into our own hands. And whatever happens at the national level, we can make Illinois a shining beacon in the middle of the country. And, and we can be that light that says that everyone deserves health care, that everyone deserves to be paid fairly, that, that women deserve to have the only say over what happens to their bodies, and that you can marry whomever you want because love is love. And a Trump-dominated Supreme Court will make the states decide on all these issues. Representative Worley has shown us where he stands on these issues, and he has voted against the Reproductive Health Act he has voted against protecting us from pre-existing conditions. And we need to hold our leaders accountable for representing us um, and for delivering the results that matter to us. I have a proven record of delivering for investors, delivering for shareholders, and delivering for our students and families and community. It's time that we have someone who can deliver and get things done for our district. And I respectfully ask for your vote to be that person and to be your next state representative in Springfield. Thank you. That ends our event for tonight. For more information, please visit the nonpartisan website, vote411.org, the candidates' websites, as well as the League of Women Voters of Naperville website. We appreciate your participation, whether you are a candidate or a voter. It is essential to preserve our freedom and our country. Please remember to vote, whether it is via vote by mail, early voting, or on election day. Thank you.